Andre, would you lead us in the pledge? Join me in the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with the liberty and justice for all. Matt, would you lead us in prayer? <coughs> yes. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the fellowship of Rotary. Uh, please be with us as we commit our service to you. Um, be with us throughout our work week and uh, be with us uh, through Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, okay, Barrett. Here we go. <laughs> Old MacDonald had a farm. E I E I O. And on that farm he had. E-I-E-I-O With a gobble gobble here and a gobble gobble there Here a gobble, there a gobble, everywhere a gobble gobble Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O Y'all are good. I sent around just a little while ago a sign-up sheet for the Christmas party on December 11. If you want to attend, please let us know so we can have an accurate count of the food. But it's twenty five dollars a person, like it always is. Um, and again, it's up here if you need to sign up. The float, uh, obviously a week from today, we'll be participating in the Christmas parade, and we will have a, a float in parentheses uh, of sorts. And so I know that next Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, we'll have. Uh, some time. Amanda, I don't remember, did we pick a time to get together? Two to four? Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, from two, two to four. Two to four. Yeah, two o'clock at Kent's Firestone. Okay. Um, Johnny's going to let us build the plug there and uh, store it for us overnight and the next day. And then we may just all meet there, possibly, before the parade to get on board. And uh, Wayne is going to pull us down Main Street. So we have um, some stuff. Uh, Donna and Kathy and I have kind of come up with some stuff. We're, we've got lights and we have a big um, banner that's a picture. It's a half of the globe and then it's got scenes on top of it from around the world, famous cities like the Eiffel Tower and, and things like that that you would recognize. We we're thinking about maybe putting that across the back of the trailer or the in front of the trailer. We've got some flags from around the, the world that we're going to kind of hang around and put some lights out. Um, Kathy mentioned getting a tree, a, a small, you need a cedar tree, yeah, Kathy? Tree. Yeah, someone can make that. You know, if anybody has access to land that might have a little cedar tree on it that they could cut down and bring us, that would be great. And, and don't do like normal where we cut it down and we're saying small and then we get it, it's like to the ceiling. That's, right. that's the way we usually do it at our house. Yeah. So we, we actually mean small. Yeah. They always look small. If it's taller than you, we don't want yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but uh, we'll kind of just kind of put all that together. If you have any lights or anything that you can bring, um, just come join us Sunday afternoon, anybody that can come. And then Monday night, we'll meet, and we're asking that if you have a red polio shirt, to please wear it. Um, if not, a Christmas shirt or another rotary shirt, wear that. Um, if you have a Santa hat or anything, wear that. And if you have a dog or a child that could ride on the float, please bring that as well. Oh, really? Oh, really? And candy. Don't forget the candy. Bring lots of candy. What about a Razorback shirt? No. no. <laughs> That's up to you. Do you, do you want to be hit with candy? <laughs> hey, uh, isn't it true that Nelson's going to dress up like Paul Harris? I would have See, this is fun. The flow's just really grown into something. I figured that. I have a 10-pound box of polyfill in the back of my van ready to use for fake snow. So okay, good. Good. We have a sign-up sheet for that, too, if you want to ride in the flow. Um, so please let us know if you plan to, to do that, too. But it's 545, right? We'll meet. It starts at 6, but 545. Five, as soon as you can after five o'clock, we'll meet. After five o'clock, so, okay. All right, good. Uh, I want to tell you that at the last board meeting, we voted to make a donation to Christmas Springs Hope on behalf of the club, so we will do that if we haven't done it already. I've already done it. We've already done it, so good. So we we're participating in that. Uh, Fred Juan has a birthday this week, so Fred, we want to wish you a happy birthday. Right. It's not today. Yeah. Yeah. 
think everything's yeah. good on the grants. I think I mentioned last time, but it's the Coach for Kids grant is something that we're, we're doing with the Bates Mill Board of Realtors. I want to make sure everybody knows that because I didn't realize it previously, but we're working with the Bates Mill Board of Realtors to do the Coach for Kids program. You want an update on that? Sure. I ordered the codes that should be delivered next week, I think Tuesday, a week from tomorrow is when I'm going to have the codes delivered. So if anybody wants any service opportunities, um, I can come up with a list of the schools that you can take the codes to. Okay. We've ordered dictionaries. We're waiting for them to come in. Um, we have a sign-up sheet for that, too. If you want to sign up to take dictionaries, we have at least one person for every school, but of course, we'll give a dictionary to every third grader in, in the county. Ron, do you have anything on Sergeant at Arms? <coughs> Today's the day. Well, I'm looking for a volunteer. <laughs> Good luck. This is what we keep running into. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I made a point to schedule lunch with mine. I forever, forever I've encouraged you all to do that too. So we can stop disappointing Ron. He's going to start finding us, aren't you, Ron? Yeah. yeah, we'll just, you can talk about somebody next week. We don't care if you're a road friend or not. We'll just talk about somebody. Well, man, I'm going to have one again and I'll find out some more stuff. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mentioned, I didn't say this. Uh, please bring candy too for the Christmas parade. So we'll need some lots of candy next week because we really don't have that much at this point. Amanda, anything else on um, Secretary? Yeah, it looks like we have a couple of guests with us today. Um, in the back with Kurt. Kurt, are they your guests or they have to get one is one is your guest line. Are you from Lyon? Yes, I'm from Lyon. Okay. Um, my name is Joshua Green. I'm currently a junior at Lyon College. I'm studying uh, chemistry and biology and took Lyon to try to become a pharmacist. Um, it's a long time in the future. Great. Love it. And would you guys stand up and introduce yourselves? I'm um, Carson Douglas. I go to school at Batesville High School. Um, I'm graduating in 2020. And I really don't know what college I'm <laughs> you got time. <laughs> and I'm Thomas Wilkins. I'm a sophomore at Bates High School, and I'm graduating in 2022. Welcome. Donna, do you have a guest with you today? I do. This is my mom, Mary Garner. Welcome. And did Kathy slip out on us? I see Kathy. Oh, she had it. Yes, with her. Okay. Um, other than that, just we, we've kind of already talked about the parade. Um, just some other quick reminders. I have a few shirts left. If you want a shirt, they're ten dollars a piece. They are all size extra large. Um, Dwight sent out invoices already. If you can, please try to pay as much as that as you can by the end of the year, so that will help us out on our books and getting everything closed down for the year, so we can get our taxes filed and all that good stuff. So if you have a balance on your account, please try to um, take care of that as, as best you can. Um, the district, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of this, but if you all remember, there used to be a program that our district did called DLA. It was District Leadership Academy. I think I was the last one that went. They canceled that program two years ago. Well, now the district has decided that they want to do something along those lines again, and RI has formed um, what they're calling RLI, which is Rotary, Le Rotary Leadership International. And um, I'm on the board for that with our district, and I went down Saturday uh, for my first training class and spent the day uh, with several other Rotarians in our district. And that will be something that will be coming up soon that we're going to start probably in February. So um, our club needs to kind of start thinking about if we want to send someone, and if so, how many. The district will pay the first class. Each class is three sessions, um, and each class is $50. So the district will pay, pay the first class. They're going to pay their first session. Um, and then after that, it would be $50 a person per session. Um, and they'll be probably in Jonesboro or Little Rock. Uh, but that was, that was an, an amazing program. I know y'all have heard me, y'all have been in the club for a while, I've told y'all before, that is when I became a Rotarian and not just a person in the seat. Uh, those things, when you go to that, you really learn about Rotary and what it's about. So if anybody's interested in that, um, I can give you some more information, but we need to be kind of looking towards the future on that. Okay, great. Congratulations. Glad to have you on that position. 
I think that's it as far as our chair, of course, for people who are here. Matt Martin is our door grader today. Congratulations, Matt. Good job. <laughs> 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 Steve Massey, you're up next week. So, Steve, one. Yeah. yeah. Right. Any other announcements? Anything I've missed? We're good at the plug. Okay. And Don, I'll invite you up to introduce our speaker. <laughs> Today we have Dr. Edward Myers, or Doc, Lucky Blum, and Angela Davis. They founded Myers Davis Life Coaching Institute in 2014 in order to provide life coaching services to businesses, colleges, organizations, and individuals throughout Arkansas and the rest of the country. They also train people to become life coaches, coaches with the Myers Davis Core Value and Idea Systems. Doc and Angela both have leadership experience in conducting leadership symposiums across the country and are certified professional life coaches. Doc is the author of seven books and contributor to several more. He and Angela are currently writing two new books to be out in stores this time next year. Doc received his PhD from Drew University. Angela received an MS degree in psychology. They have both been successful in promotion and personal development in chambers, organizations, colleges, schools, and businesses. Welcome, Doc and Angela. My voice is trying to fly the coop today, so you'll have to excuse that. But thank you so much for having us today. Um, it's always a pleasure to be here. Um, today we're going to be talking about finding your passion and meaning. But before we do that, we always have a tradition. And Doc does this with five-year-olds all the way up to 100 at Senior Citizen Living. So everybody stand up. <laughs> We're going to get our blood flowing yeah. on this one and everything, because if you've been to one of our things before, you'll know what we're about to do, and it has to do with a cheer that we do, and it goes like this. Boy, do I feel great! Everybody is to participate. Here's the rule. If you don't, I'm watching you. If you don't, you get the pleasure of doing it all by yourself when the rest of us sit down, okay? Everybody ready? One, two, three. Boy, do I feel great! Oh, get yourself a hand. That was great. Whoa, I believe that's the best we've ever had done. Anywhere. At any time. So, I know when we start talking about it, you say finding your passion or your meaning. Some of you may be thinking, oh, come on. There are so many people who give talks like this. Not another one. Well, in one sense, I want to say, yeah, another one. In another sense, I want to say, not exactly the way that we're going to do it because we are passionate about what we do we want to share that passion with you and the meaning that we have in such a way as we hope we can inspire you in what you're doing make you go away saying boy i sure am glad i went to rotary today all right well in finding your passion how many of you are doing what your passion is and how many of you know retirement, right? Retirement. <laughs> you said that with a big old grin. <laughs> and how many of you know what your meaning in life is? How many of you found your meaning? Yes. What life coaching is, we help people find their purpose. And if they're kind of stuck in a rut, we help them figure out how to get out of that rut and find their passion and find their meaning. Um, we're currently working with UACCB students on student retention. So if they're kind of slipping and life is getting in the way of schooling, we coach them and help them to move forward or have a plan B. And we enjoy doing what we're doing. One of the things that's different in what we do, we're not therapists, we're not counselors. We don't in any way try to deal with people's problems and issues at that arena. If someone comes to us and they have, there are problems like that, and we figure that out, we send them to the professional that they need to see. What we're schooled in is learning how to guide you down a journey by asking certain questions. We'll begin today with these three. What motivates you? What inspires you? What excites you? Now, those three words, motivates, inspires, and excites, might be used synonymously, but at the same time, one might resonate with you over the other but what we're interested in is finding out what people are really about with their life we're not just here to suck air 
there's a reason why we're here, and that's what we're trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. you can just pull all the rest of them up at the same time. What scares you and holds you back? Um, you know what, when we first started Myers Davis, we kind of, we jumped off the cliff and said, okay, this is what we're going to try. And you know what? It worked. And we have become a big success in our eyes. <laughs> um, but what scares you? Think about what scares you and what's holding you back. What's the number one reason usually that scares people? Fear of failure. Yes. Um, what do you do well naturally? Well, Doc and I have different natural talents. He is very good at making, making people laugh, and he's very outgoing. And I'm the more creative one, I guess, of the two. And so we complement each other in what we do. Um, what do you need to improve on? Where are your weaknesses? Where are your strengths? Um, what do you pretend to, this is a good question. What do you pretend to like, but don't? How many of you pretend to like something, but don't? All of us do. Anybody want to share? There's <laughs> <laughs> a reason we don't. <laughs> Most people don't want to share that. Okay. What we want to do, you've been given a blank piece of paper, and what we want to do is go through a series of questions just to ask you to think about, we're going to give you about 10 seconds, all right? Now, we're not going to give you a grade on this or anything like that, but what we want to do is ask you to think about the question, write down the answer as quickly as you possibly can. And as we go through these, we'll be making some comments as well, but we want you to try to think through this. Now, if you take the time, if you wish to, to really go through this, it will be helpful to you. I promise it will. And I hope you're not like one <laughs> company employer that I was talking to one time when I was talking to him about some testing we were going to do and he rolled his eyes and said, oh my goodness, I've done this seven times already in my life. Do I have to do another one? And I thought, no, because you're not going to get anything out of it. If you come to it with that attitude, you won't get anything out of it. So, here are the questions. Question number one. Oh, wait. Oh, next slide. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> who's someone in your life or in history whose life and work inspires you and why? Maybe a family member, maybe alive, maybe dead. Maybe somebody you've met, maybe somebody you've not met. Maybe somebody, maybe you've done some reading of their material. It doesn't make any difference. Who really inspires you and why? There are several people in this room that have inspired me all of my life. So, I just want to throw that in. I see people still riding, so I'm going to wait just a minute. Can you hear people still thinking? And thinking. I see the wheels turning. Yes. <laughs> okay, next question. What are your top, top five most deeply rooted core values? Like kindness, honesty, motivation, self-discipline, compassion. Some of your, your five top most deeply rooted core values. Tell you what, when we do our life training for those who are going to be Myers Davis life coaches, they have to, we're going to certify that they share the same core values that we hold. Yes. Because it's just not going to work for them to represent us if they don't hold the same core values that we have. Okay. All right, number next. What isn't working well for you in your current life or career? What drains you or makes you stressed and anxious or waste your time? So 
one of those interesting questions to ask, most especially, oh, I bought a book recently. It's entitled, Stress is Desserts Spelled Backwards. I love that. Because when I get stressed, I go to the cupboard. <laughs> Where are the sweets? You know, and that's real good too. But uh, we have to evaluate what's, what's, doing, what's doing good, what's not doing good. It's kind of like Marcus Buckingham's book on now, go find your strengths or improve your strengths and realize what they are, what's working well for you, and what it is. You know, in life coaching, um, we do a lot of self-assessments, a lot of self-evaluations with everybody that we work with. And um, so that's kind of what we're doing today. And you need to do this ever so often to regroup. Um, there is a particular person in my life that has caused so much stress with me and is so demanding that I've had to back away from that and say, I love you, but I've got to i got to have some space, and sometimes you have to do that. I mean, how many of you have ever had to do something like that? Yes. Well, the real challenge is, is that happens to be your boss. You know, or uh, it might be somebody who is an employee. You might want to read John Gordon's book, The Energy Bus. Or a family member, even. Yeah, you know. or even a family member mm -hmm. can do that. Okay, next one. How have your fears and limiting beliefs held you back from finding your passion? <clears throat> and we all have limiting beliefs. Um, what we need to do is change that thought process from fear of failure to I'm going to be a success. Sometimes it's not that easy, but to reprogram your brain to think the positive instead of the negative. Um, uh, Anybody who knows me knows that I love Carol Burnett. And when she was 20 years old, she hopped on a bus to New York saying, I'm going to be an actress. And she never once thought she would fail. She never once had that fear that she was going to fail. She got off that bus saying, I'm going to be a success. So you just have to turn that thought process around. But Make sure you answer that question because I've been talking too much. But have your fears and limiting beliefs held you back from finding your true passion? I have a life coach too that I'm in a group session and recently he, he said something that shared with all of us that has made all the difference for me in a lot of things. And he said, when you find yourself feeling like you failed, simply say, I've not accomplished that yet. That little three-letter word opened a whole new arena for me because it's like, no, I haven't failed. Because we fail when you walk, when you quit. Okay? And so it's kind of like John Maxwell's book, Failing Forward. If you're going to fail, fail forward. You know, learn from your failures. Keep going. Here's the next one. Nelson, this one's for you. Uh -oh. If you live to the age of 90, how many days do you have left to live? And what you simply do down here at the bottom, take 90 minus your current age and multiply that by 365. So y'all tell that. me how many days you've got left if you live to be 90. I'm gonna live to be 120. Yes. I don't know where I picked that number, but I just I just got it because I I don't know. <laughs> this is the real thought question right here. And yes, you may use your phones for your calculators. <laughs> Absolutely. 90 minus your current age multiplied by 365. And a lot of times we live in date type compartments. Day tight compartments. So that we make the best of what we can do every day. The one thing we all share a lot is time. We may be on a different economic scale. We may be on a different academic scale. We may be on a different, just fill in the blank. But one thing nobody has over anybody else is time. So take every day, 
and make it your best. <clears throat> now, how many of those days after you've done your figuring are you willing to live disliking your life, your work, your relationships, or yourself? Think about that a minute. How many of those days are you willing to dislike one of those things? Okay. If you can be remembered for three things after you die, what would they be? Three things after you die. Now, the challenge on this one is really going to come to our young folks who are sitting back here at this table because you're kind of like, that's so far away. And it really should be. I don't think you ought to be paranoid about you're going to die tomorrow. But none of us knows really when that day is going to come. So it bears to think about what I really want to be remembered for. I'd say everybody who is a Rotarian can be remembered for the good works that you do in our community mm -hmm. because you do awesome works. Mm -hmm. so that should be one on your list of what you do through Rotary and making a difference here in our community. Okay, next one. If you want to find your passion, ponder all these questions. Ask yourself, self-evaluate your life and what you're doing, what you're wasting time doing. The little no-nonsense things that you're doing. Find more meaning in them or get rid of them. Just think about it. There's a little video we'd like to play right now that we'd like for you to, to watch that we think will fit in quite well with what we've been talking about. It's a four-minute video. Sorry, it's skipping Ooh. the end. My bad. <laughs> Everything around us that we call life was made up by people that are no smarter than you. So build a life. Don't live one. Build one. My father could have been a great comedian, but he didn't believe that that was possible for him. I learned many great lessons from my father, not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. But you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. And it is going to get hard and you're going to want to quit sometimes, but it'll be colored by who you are and more who you want to be. I definitely found that uh, wanting to be an actor stems from wanting to be somebody. The hardest thing to listen to, your instincts, your human personal intuition, always whispers, it never shouts. Very hard to hear. So you have to, every day of your lives, be ready to hear what whispers in your ear it very rarely shouts and if you can listen to the whisper and it's something you think you want to do for the rest of your life then that is going to be what you do for the rest of your life and we will benefit from everything you do as far as i can tell it's just about letting the universe know what you want and working toward it while letting go of how it comes to pass and you will 
need to find your passion. Find your passion and follow it. Don't give up on finding it. As you are responsible for your life. And if you're sitting around waiting on somebody to save you, to fix you, to even help you, you are wasting your time because only you have the power to take responsibility to move your life forward. And the sooner you get that, the sooner your life gets into gear. What matters is now, this moment, and your willingness to see this moment for what it is, accept it, forgive the past, take responsibility, and move forward. So when I think of what is the meaning of life, people ask that question on the assumption that meaning is something you can look for. and lagging issues it looks like. <laughs> Take that number that you just figured up, figure out how you want to spend the rest of your life. Thank you for having us. One last slide. Yeah. Yes, one, one, last one last slide. slide. Found this just the other day when we were kind of doing some reviewing on the house. The There's nothing you cannot be. There's no Sorry about that. <laughs> Pull it back up here. I can read it. I'm about to have it up, sir. You can. Huh? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's okay. We had the video and we had the PowerPoint, so we're going back and forth. You can read it if you want. Yeah, that probably works. It might take a second. Projector. Okay. Yeah. Let me just read this because it's from Simon Sinek. And I, I really like reading after this guy. He is really sharp when it comes to like knowing your why or start with why etc he said this working hard for something we don't care about is called stress working hard for something we love is called passion isn't that nice i think so thank you for having us we appreciate it thank you <laughs> Time for maybe a question or two. If anybody has a question for them, sure. this always scares me because it yeah. means <laughs> it means that you didn't understand the thing we talk about was way over your head. Or it's no, kind of like you did a good no. job. You know, it's the good. man that no, you sir. just quoted. His last name really is Sinek. S I N E K. Yeah. Sinek. So it's it not S Y. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah. No, he's not a cynic. <laughs> you can find his videos on YouTube. He is amazing, and his books are fabulous. Yeah. One of his books is entitled Leaders Eat Last. Just the whole concept of it is good. Yes, sir. I think the, the challenge that some people run into is not that they haven't found a passion or that they're not passionate about their job or their work. I think the challenge is, is trying to figure out sometimes that you know what you're currently doing as passionate as you are and it's as fulfilling as it is is it what you're really designed to do exactly. and I, I think that's the challenge i don't i don't think the challenge necessarily is well you know i'm disappointed in my job i don't like my job it's more or less is this is this what my purpose is oh absolutely and i think that's where the lines are blurred i mean yeah. it's real easy for me to go I'm just gonna throw something out there, but it's real easy for me to go and say, okay, well, you know, there's no aspect of my job that I like, or you know, hey, let's it's time for a change. It's a lot harder when you like most aspects of your job, but maybe it's not as fulfilling as you mm -hmm. would desire it to be, mm -hmm. or maybe it's not quite as purpose-driven as, as you'd hoped it would yes. be, or maybe you've lost the identity of the job. Absolutely. 
that's how our coaching comes into um, factor into this I mean we could talk for 20 minutes on finding your passion but it takes a lot more time as we coach with you to do more evaluations on what you can change and what you can't change yet but set goals to change later or uh, it's all a process so we don't expect that to happen overnight but in our training we were divided up in little groups there were six in this group and we were all practicing life coaching and so forth and there was a lady from Dallas never will forget she was an African-American young lady young and we were talking and I just kept asking this question she'd ask another I'd ask another and all of a sudden she said oh, that's it I said what she said that's what I've been looking for that's what I meant to do I know now when I go home what I'm going to do with my life. It's an That's the exciting moment. thing. Yeah. yeah. And we teach, one of our favorite things is the, the, the teen summits we have in the summertime. We work fourth through sixth grade, seventh through ninth, and tenth through twelfth. One of the things I, I, I like to do with them has to do with their dreams too. We don't know how to dream. You know why? Because somebody stole that ability from us. When we were kids, you could dream about, I'm going to be a policeman. I'm going to be a fireman. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a banker. And somebody somewhere probably came along, if you're not there, and said, mm, you don't really want to do that. <laughs> I mean, firemen have to run into fires. You don't really want to do that. People don't like policemen. And I call them dream stealers. I've had dreams stolen from me. So I always tell them this. This might be good advice for you, too. Be careful who you share your dream with. Because you only share your dream with somebody who'll say, Go for it. You can do it. Because that's really why you would share it with us. Anything else? Come here, question. Did that, did that. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you very much. Oh, yes. One more. Sorry, Sorry I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, you say that you work with those uh, like people around my age, or, or, or rather younger, and help them find their passion and such. Where do you draw the line between helping them like find their passion and helping them to find what might be realistic and work for them? Because I mean, it's, it's a real world, and we want them to be able to, to dream and to pursue that. But we also want to um, help them get good jobs and help them to, I don't know, be good members of society as well. Yeah. It, it's a balance, and how, how do you um, how do you achieve that? How do you help them pursue their dreams and also not be torn down by the realities of the world? Yeah. Good question. One of the, here's a good reality check for me. I would have never been a professional NBA player. Look at me. I would have never been a professional. NBA player. You have to, as these young minds are forming, let them know that the possibilities are endless. But then you have to understand sometimes there are human limitations. But when you're dreaming, you don't place a limitation on it. You just let them dream. Let them dream. Because the reality check will come soon enough. And also, we focus on plan B's too. If plan A doesn't work, we go to plan B. And a lot of people don't have a plan B. So that's one of the things that we work on. And we also ask questions to help you realize the reality of it too. I mean, you know, this could happen, but yes, you can do this, you know. So. We go through the realities of it as well. So. And, see, and see, one of the things that happens with our students at UACCB is when they hit a, a, a hole in the road, their plan A is quit. I, mean, I got to go get a job, I got to quit. We try to say, wait a minute, there's another choice. What could it possibly be? We even have a chart in our office down at the uh, at our little room at the at the region, the old region's bank building where we are, and it says plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. In other words, you just keep going down the plans till you hit the one that's there. But to realize that, well, for instance, if we have a student at UACCB who 
says, oh, I just can't handle this anymore, I'm gonna quit. We help them to realize that's not really an option. To get forward in your life, you've got to finish. Quitting is not an option. So that's one of the other things that we work with them on too. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Joker right. draw. We have two, three, one, seven, six, nine, three. Oh, is it three? Is it me? Of course it is. 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 Of course to our speakers, we have a, uh, a literacy project that we're doing, so we're going to donate a book on your behalf to the local library. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements to go to the club? If not, we'll end with the four white test. Number one. Is, is it true? true? Number two. Is it fair to all concerned? Number three. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And number four. Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Have a nice Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.